on this episode of AV Week. We are, or I am, coming to you from Las Vegas, the first regional roadshow uh, for LeGrand. We'll talk about that. Also, how to overcome supply chain shortages in 2022 and the future of 8K. All that and more next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 544, recorded Friday, January 21st, 2022. Grassroots AV. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Extron, industry leading technology backed by world class support. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap up of audio, visual, news, and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, I sound a little differently. Uh, if you're watching it, you can see the fact that I'm not in the studio. I am in Las Vegas uh, for LeGrand AV's first open house uh, road show with the uh, LeGrand AV trailer. So uh, they're bouncing around the, the, the country. We'll talk about that in a second. But first and foremost, uh, with me to discuss the news and information we have gathered this week. First and foremost, Haley Tui uh, from Harmon. Welcome, ma'am. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, ma'am. Uh, and also with us is my, uh, my good friend, uh, the uh, sage of the AV industry, Mr. Brock McGinnis from Nationwide. Welcome, sir. Hi, Tim. This is fantastic. And I wish I was with you. I'd love to be in Vegas right now. <laughs> I, wish you, I wish you were, too. Hopefully, hopefully by the time um, Infocom comes around, uh, you will be able to get back in the country. Brock is from is, is, lives in Toronto, um, and you'll be able to get back in, into the country. So that that is ideal. Um, first story, though, guys, uh, comes to us from our friends over at AV Magazine. Uh, Roland Hemmings, uh, a consultant, uh, he writes how to overcome supply chain shortages in 2022. Not to be silly. But um, that, that's, that is a, a tall order. Uh, everything between the, uh, the backlog of barges and ships, uh, both in, in uh, Long Beach in LA, but also in, in New Jersey, uh, and now down around Savannah, Georgia. Serious, serious backups there, and chip shortages. However, uh, Mr. Hemmings does give us a couple of options here. One is be honest, order early, and communicate with vendors. That is one option, certainly. Um, Brock, there's a couple other options as well. One is, is when you are communicating and being honest with your clients, uh, letting them know uh, some of the other options that they have. If they are a quote unquote one house or another, uh, you may love this product or this company, but here, here are some other options that you have. When you guys are talking to clients right now, what are you telling them and how are you able to communicate some of this, uh, the issues that we're having right now? Um, I'm Telling them it's exactly the same thing as trying to buy a new car. Uh, you just can't get one, uh, but you can order one and uh, you'll get exactly what you want next year. Um, the approach that we're generally taking, Tim, is, uh, is, as Roland pointed out, is to go more generic in our design. If I need a, a six input, four output matrix switcher, um, that's what I'm quoting. And that gives me the flexibility later when it comes time to deliver uh, to be able to choose a product from a bunch of different manufacturers. Uh, and, uh, and the other thing that we're doing is before we sit down um, to design a new system is actually talking to vendors about what they have on the shelf because uh, there are many ways to skin a cat um, if you have you know, a, a clean sheet of paper to design with. And uh, as I had mentioned to Haley when we were speaking before uh, the show started recording, um, I have a proposal going out today um, with stuff in it that uh, for the most part, I've never used before, uh, but it's available, um, it's of uh, good quality and it meets the customer's needs. Uh, and the customer's number one need is that 90 days from now, uh, they have a training room. Uh, to uh, to open up and and uh, uh, deal with their employees as they start to come back uh, to work in the office. So, okay, the question of uh, how do we overcome supply chain shortages? It, it's a tough one for me, and and as a manufacturer, um, you know, I, I almost feel like uh, a politician when I answer this question because for me, honestly, as a sales manager, it, it doesn't come down to 
how do we overcome supply chain shortages? At this moment for me, it is how do I properly communicate supply chain shortages to my customers? So in my case, I am an end customer business development manager and I have a small team and at Harman what we focus on because I am a Harman employee and I have to get in front of that is, is we focus on setting expectations with end customers on their project and we keep it extremely project focused. Now, something that I think is important for any manufacturer because we are the ones who are, you know, taking a lot of the blame for supply chain shortages naturally is that the first step with any large organization is to internally, properly internally communicate supply chain shortages on a skew by skew basis. And no, I don't mean, you know, put a, a press release out for the public about every single skew every single day. It's, it's not possible when there are thousands of SKUs that an organization is manufacturing, but uh, it, it has to start internally uh, because it effectively becomes a big game of telephone. Uh, and internally people need to know, okay, what can I communicate with my integrator, with the consultant who then passes that on to the end customer? And in my case, what can I communicate directly with an end customer, even though I'm not selling direct? So the first step is internal communication. It must be done right. Well, and I, I think too, um, Haley, that, uh, that manufacturers can pivot a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of products you would like to sell, but they're not available. Um, if, uh, yeah. if, you know, if, if your uh, people, you know, can tell you and say, hey, these are products that we do have on the shelf and that we can sell. Um, your sales force can make those things known. And that's really valuable uh, information to integrators because many of us integrators are needing to have to pivot as well. We're selling a lot more service. Um, we're selling what we can get our hands on to meet client needs in the short term while we wait for the products that we've already sold them to be able to install uh, in the long term, and uh, and there is no uh, there is no magic pill that is going to fix this. Um, I uh, I uh, play cards with a fellow that is uh, very senior with one of the uh, computer manufacturers, and they're telling their largest customers twenty three months. That's the order time oh boy. Um, for, uh, uh, you know, for certain kinds of, and I, I'm not going to mention the computer manufacturer, but, uh, but these problems are serious and they go way beyond the audiovisual industry. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's anything, anything with a chip in it. Let, let's, let's highlight something that, that Brock just said there. Uh, anything with a chip in it, 23 months. We're, we're recording this at the end of January of 2022. Not that my math is the greatest in the world, but 12 months is in a year. Let's call 24 months. That's two years. That's 2025 is what we're looking at. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Um, that's what I was told on, uh, on the delivery of uh, PCs and computing components, some PCs and computing components. Um, so, uh, and, and it, it shocked me and I asked him again, um, but, uh, that's what they're quoting their customers. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, and it just, it's always a good reminder for me. And of course I'm, I'm looking at trends beyond the AV industry just to, just to see how is this industry affected versus others. And it, it's both validating and also terrifying when, when I see data about what's going on in other industries. Um, and of course, they those all do overlap with us in some ways, or a lot of these do. But uh, like a computer manufacturer, for example, that 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 is AV. But even outside of that, you know, with car cars, for example, it's it it's uh it's a problem that we are all experiencing, um, and it's scary. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this first segment of AV Week. To check out the rest of the episode for free, click on the link below or go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv. Thank you.